Hey there. So as y'all know, we're playing out episodes this week that tie to our team's resolutions for the new year. Enjoy. Today on CityCast DC, one thing that's part of our resolutions is to not just present problems about the city, but also help you find a way to solve them. So in that vein, here is our chat with the head of DC's Health Rodent Control Program, Gerard Brown, to talk about the rat problem in the city and how you can be a good neighbor and help solve it. And if that gets you thinking about any solutions that you've come across in the city, email us and tell us all about them at dc at citycast.fm. It's Thursday, December 29th, 2022. I'm Bridget Todd, and this is CityCast DC. So, Gerard, it feels like there are more rats in the city than normal. Are there? Is that actually what's happening? We don't exactly know how many rats it is, but we know how many complaints we get. And the complaints have increased for the past three or four years, you know, almost a thousand a year. And I'm wondering, like, how bad has the problem been this summer with the heat? Like, how many calls has D.C. Health gotten about the rat problem in the city this summer? To date, it's 9,664. So that's almost 10,000 D.C. residents who are concerned and sick and tired of the rats in D.C. Yes, but... So you got to factor in some people call about the same rat. Sometimes when we have a piece in the newspaper or on TV, and then the main message is to call 311. And then you'll see the calls go up. But it's still more calls, even with that considered. Since 2019, we got 6,048 calls. 2020... We got 8,107. 2021, we got 11,391. Wow, that is, yeah, it's really increasing. So that's a lot of complaints. I also feel like the rats have maybe gotten a bit bigger. Have you heard or seen anything about that, or am I imagining things? Well, Dr. Corrigan said they are not. They said they only weigh about a pound. Right. So for people listening, Bobby Corrigan is an urban rodentologist, which means he studies city rats for a living. And he runs D.C.'s annual rat academy every summer. Yes. But what happens is that they puff up their fur for a defensive mechanism to make it look like they're bigger. I've heard from residents that, that rats are as big as cats. I have not seen it, but that's what I hear. That makes a lot of sense that they're puffing themselves up. And so we're just seeing them look bigger. Maybe they're not necessarily actually bigger, but that certainly is a lot grosser. You know, when you encounter them on the street, when they scurry in front of you. I guess one of my questions is, why do you think that we're seeing more complaints around the rats? What's going on here? What happened with the pandemic is the way we live changed. At first, all the restaurants shut down. Everybody was working from home. You had food deliveries, Grub, Hub, Uber Eats. I could stand on my front for an hour and see five or six deliveries. And what I noticed from driving through the city, that the trash in most alleys was overflowing. Because we home and we generate more trash. And people, I don't think, use their garbage disposal as, as much as they should. They put the food waste in the trash and that draws the rats to them. And then when you don't have enough room in your trash can, people tend to put the trash bags on the ground and the trash bags sit on the ground for a few days. And that draws the rats, attract the rats and support the rats. And that's happened all over the city. The rats had changed just like us. When the restaurants closed down, they migrated into the residential areas and we fed them. They had plenty of food to eat when they came there. So our position is we need to teach people how to put out their trash and not put food in the trash can, not put the trash out if the can is overflowing until it's getting ready to be collected. Okay, this is great advice. And we're talking a lot about individual people's trash choices, how they dispose of their trash and all that. What about compost? Is composting worse than other types of trash at attracting rats? If it's food, then it's going to attract rats. 
the only way that I see composting is going to not attract rats is in metal containers. If it's in heavy-duty plastic, that's a piece of cake for the rats. They can chew right through it. It's not that the rats say, oh, look at that plastic. That looks like something good to eat. <laughs> you know, it's not the plastic. It's the food inside the can. Oh, my gosh. So in my alley, all of the plastic trash cans have those holes cut in them. And every time we walk by, we joke that it's like a little rat drive through where they're just getting in there and getting all the food. So I actually need this information. Where can I find those metal trash containers and what do they cost? So right now, you have to be careful because DPW, their trucks are fitted to lift up the super cans. So what they're doing right now, they're working with some engineers that can make a material that the rats can't chew through for the residential cans. Because we see it too, and they see it too, you know. Yeah, I mean, I guess it really comes down to not putting food in your trash cans, which I feel like a lot of D.C. residents, this is like, new information because you're cleaning up your food waste. It goes in the trash. The trash goes into the alley. You're kind of trained to stop thinking about it at that point. But I feel like what you're suggesting is kind of a mindset reframing of how you actually do and deal with your household garbage. Yes, that's right. The idea is to change people's behavior. Mm, I mean, I hear you on that. And I want to play devil's advocate a little bit because it just seems so difficult to limit putting food out in your trash. Like in my apartment, my garbage disposal is like pretty janky. So I definitely over rely on just scraping it into the trash or like those styrofoam containers that chicken comes in. Like that's always going to have food residue on it. How can we actually make this be protocol that folks can actually live in their everyday lives, like not throwing food out in the garbage so much? So one thing, we're not going to get rid of all the rats. Not in my lifetime. (laughs) Our goal is reduction. So I live in D.C. I live in a row house. When I noticed that before the trash day, my trash cans were overflowing. And I noticed, like, my wife might put chicken bones or scraps and stuff in the trash. So I got another can. And I put... It's a can that has a clamp on it, and I put that trash in that can, and I take it out to the super can when it's time for it to be collected the night before. And some people freeze their garbage. I don't go that far, but I've talked to people that do. And they freeze their garbage, and they put it out close to the time it's collected. So there is a multi-pronged strategy to prevent rats at the Brown household. You've got the super cans, the clamps. You're, You're on it. I am. But the thing with that is everybody has to be on it because the rats can travel 150 feet to get to their food. So a lot of times when people call and they see rats in their yard, they don't live in their yard. They just pass them through to get to their food. So if somebody in my alley is not behaving the way they should, then it's a real possibility that rats are going to show up. Well, it's like you were saying earlier um, that it really has to be a community effort, that it's so easy to be like, oh, my neighbor moved in and he doesn't take care of his trash or like this person brought the rats with them. But that's kind of the wrong mindset because it really is going to be a community effort to truly deal with the rat population in D.C. Yes. So what we do is we take it block by block because each block is different. And we create partnerships with residents and businesses. We have a a community hygiene program that three requirements. That is rat problems, trash problems, and people that are sick and tired of it. And they're more open to suggestions and recommendations when they walk out their back door and a rat run across their foot. So we get these people in the room and build partnerships. We have some people on Capitol Hill, they walk with us and they keep note of how many rat burrows we find at what address, and we go there once a month. And that's one relationship we have. And they appreciate it. When people know what they can do to help, most people don't mind. Mm, You know, you mentioned taking walks with government representatives. Cord, you and I were talking about Mayor Bowser and her rat walk and how that one rat walk ended with the department being funded differently. Can you tell us about that? Yes, actually, it was more than one rat walk. 
the one that we were talking about was the one in DuPont Circle. It was a multi-agency walk. We had the community, we had agency directors, and we walked around. And it was a learning experience for the mayor, too. One situation, we got to uh, a building that had a base station. A base station is a little black box with poison in it. And she asked me, do those really work? And I said, look around the corner. And it was overflowing trash cans and bags of trash on the ground, you know. So the same situation, the rest not going to eat the poison when they have all this food, you know. So she understood that. Yeah, so let's say that I have a rat problem and I called DC Health to help me out. What's the process like for treatment? What do you all do? So we have 17 certified pest controllers. When you call 311, nine times out of 10, somebody's going to be conducting an inspection tomorrow. What we do is come out and look for conditions that support rats. And we look for the rat burrows, the holes in the ground. And when we find them, we inject some rodenticide in it. It's called tracking powder, which we mainly use. It's a powder that we pump in the world, and it gets on the rat's fur. And when they groom themselves, they ingest the rodenticide, and it kills them. It works better than the bait, the little green blocks and stuff, because the bait competes with food. So if you had a piece of a green block on the ground and a piece of chicken, what you going to eat? <laughs> Definitely the chicken. <laughs> right. So the poison bait competes with food, but the tracking powder it does not because it gets directly on them. Oh, that's so fascinating. And I know that we were talking a little bit before we started recording about some of the maybe less effective treatments that people have tried to take care of rats and mice and pests in their homes. Things like cats or peppermint oil on cotton balls. What do you say about those kind of I guess we'll say alternative treatments that might not be the most traditionally effective, but people try nonetheless. Well, I won't argue with somebody that say it works. If it's working for you, it's working for me. But I don't recommend those type things. Cats, we don't support cats killing rats. We don't support something that you can put down that deter them. The main thing we want to get across to residents is sanitation, is rodent control. Have you heard of any, like, weird rat control strategies that people have tried? Yes. <laughs> Can you share one with us? Right now, you have groups of people that use dogs that kill rats. I don't know if you heard of that. They did it in the 18th century. People had their mainly terriers, and they had them, and they had pits of rats, and the the men would drop their dogs in the pit and they bet on what dog would kill the most rats the fastest. Those dogs are still around. It's companies now that you can actually pay and they'll bring their dogs out. Oh my and God. It is fascinating. One of the, the owners of one of the companies told me he went to an area and his dogs killed 40 rats in 10 minutes. You know, and he was saying if the dogs go out, and they don't get any rats, he can tell that they are disappointed. They look disappointed, <laughs> you know. Oh, that's too funny. Oh, I'm so glad that I asked. I I'd love it if you could settle a little bet that we have here on the CityCast team. What neighborhood in D.C. do you get the most complaints about? Can you tell us that? I can't settle that bet. <laughs> so the, the, the way I usually answer that question is the, we get the least amount of complaints in Ward 3, 7, and 8. The rest of the wards usually go up and down around the same amount month to month. Okay, that's that's helpful. What ward did you bet on? Oh, Ward 1, for sure. That's Ward 1, 2, 4, 5, <laughs> and 6. They fluctuate. They go up and down. Oh, so people are just in those wards are just complaining about the rats. Maybe it's difficult to say, you know, oh, like DuPont Circle full of rats, Columbia Heights full of rats. But it just sort of fluctuates up and down among those wards. Yes. I mean, one rat is too many. 
And then we might go to somebody else. I've been to somebody else and was see rats in this yard in, in one situation where a person was coming out the door and I said, well, we're here for the rats. I haven't seen no rats. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I'm standing right by a rat hole. So some people don't see them. Some people do. And some people may not go in the back a lot. They don't know what's going on back there, you know, and, and rats kind of take over. Because people, we want people to call before the rats get too bad. We don't want people to call after the rats start eating wires in their car, tearing up the trash can. If you see a rat or you think you see a rat, we want you to call us. Don't wait too long. So how can people learn more about the best ways to deal with the rats that they might be seeing in D.C.? So we have a lot of information on our website, DC Health, and what we are doing now is working on putting it on social media, on our website. So that's just the best thing to go to our website. That's really helpful. I feel like I'm learning that I've been a little bit of a a negligent neighbor with how I throw out my foodstuffs. Yes. So you are now deputized. (laughs) So when you see Raz, you send me an email and let me know where it's at. And I have a team go out there and try to find it. Oh, will do. Well, Gerard, I could talk to you all day. Thank you so much for being here. I feel like I learned a lot, and I think I'm going to change my behavior going forward, and I hope some of our listeners do too. Thank you. I do too. And I enjoy talking to you. That's all for today here at CityCast DC. Feeling solutions-oriented? Well, tell your friends and neighbors all about us and our newsletter, Hey DC. We've got another resolution coming for you tomorrow, so we'll talk to you then. 